guys, how's it going? Tess back again with episode number 13 of the Chelsea Career Mode here on Xbox One. Now, hopefully, 13 won't be unlucky for us, considering we've got a massive London rivalry game against Arsenal away at the Emirates in the rain. Now, of course, the rain is very, very hard to play in on um, FIFA 14, especially for me. But as you can see, we're fifth in the league right now, level on points with Arsenal. So we were hoping to at least stay level on points with them by the end of this one. But Petr Cech pushes out that shot early on from the header from the free kick. And that was going to be a bit of a theme in these early stages. You see Walcott whips in another header from uh, from that same side. Petek again palms it wide. And they really should have just pushed that either out for a corner or further away from the goal. But it falls right to the feet of Per Mertesacker. And we're just fortunate the Mertesacker is an absolute donkey and pushes that wide of the post. Otherwise, we'd have been 1-0 down early on. We were going to give away possession on the edge of the box again here. Just 10 minutes in. This time, Petek makes a decent save from Theo Walcott. And Edin Zeko misses the open goal. So we are riding our luck in these early stages, to say the least. But Mesut Ozil picks up a yellow card here. Now look at the way he dives into this tackle. Jumps into it, two feet off the ground. I think he could have had a red for that. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But personally, I think he possibly could have been red carded for that challenge. And that would have completely changed the outlook of the rest of the game. But Aaron Ramsey is going to break free here. This time, Petrček does get a decent save around the post out for a corner rather than pushing it back into a danger zone. And we're able to uh, to get away with another one. But we're actually going to catch him on the break here into first half stoppage time. Frank's going to take a nice turn around Aaron Ramsey there. Was trying to look for one of the bottom corners, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, he smashes it straight at Chesney, and uh, unfortunately, we're only able to uh, to keep it at nil nil. And as you can see, wowzers! Those stats at half time: 60-ish percent possession for Arsenal, nine shots, five on target, and that Frank effort in stoppage time was our only attempt at goal. But we're going to have another one there just two minutes into the second half. Ramirez drawing a good save out of Chesney again. This one was more dangerous, but uh, again, the Polish goalkeeper was able to uh, to make a decent save. And then he makes another save from the header from a corner as well. So he's definitely on form right now, uh, Wojciech Chesney. And uh, it was basically a game of goalkeepers, to be uh, to be completely honest. But here we're going to get even more fortunate. Zeko again hits the outside of the post, but fortunately he was offside and wasn't going to be able to uh, snap up any rebounds. So will we actually get away with that? That one but we're not going to get away with this one again loose in possession this time is Kevin De Bruyne he's only been on the pitch a couple of minutes and uh, Santi Gazzola is going to race through and put them 1-0 up in the 71st minute now watch Edin Zeko on the replay oh, was in control of uh, Rafael Varane went to make the tackle on uh, Santi Gazzola and Edin Zeko just positions his body between man and ball see him there on the edge of the box number 18 just positions himself between Varane and the ball and I can't get to Gazzola to make the challenge really really fantastic attacking position Positional play there from Edin Zeko, and that was the difference that uh, you know needed to be made to uh, to get one of the teams in front. But in stop his time again. Rambo squares the ball to Torres. He's got to finish that hands on head. Final whistle is going to go. 92nd minute, and Fernando Torres. It's a great save, but I'm still extremely disappointed. We could have snatched a point away from the Emirates there. And uh, we didn't deserve to snatch a point away from the Emirates, to be completely honest. But it's still, it would have been an absolute result if we were able to take a 1-0 draw away from Arsenal. But unfortunately, that wasn't to be the case. So uh, we got a game against Swansea coming up on the Boxing Day, actually, 26th of December. I made a couple of changes to freshen things up. De Bruyne, who gave away possession there, came off the bench and uh, he's actually starting this one. Sami Eto'o is making his first start since coming back from having that ligament damage earlier on in the season. Was out for three months. Made an appearance off the bench in the previous episode. But as you can see, we're now dropped to sixth. Uh, Arsenal are three points ahead of us thanks to that win. But we couldn't afford another slip-up here against Swansea. We really needed to get back on that winning train. And uh, we came close to going behind, actually, in the opening five or six minutes or so. Wilfred Boney hits the post, and then fortunately, the uh, defending falling over him kind of knocks the ball out of harm's way or uh, narrows the angle enough for Czech to be able to make a comfortable save but uh, we actually stepped things up from that point on Eden Hazard with a lovely turn and shot on the edge of the box and Andre Scherler is there to make the difference now when that first went in I was a little bit apprehensive I thought he was offside and wasn't going to celebrate but you'll be able to see from the replay he was onside it was just the speed of the movement from him that meant he was so far away from the defenders just read what was going to happen more so than uh, than any of the defenders stood there solid and uh, he just ran on put a ball into an empty net which gave us a nice 1-0 lead we came close to getting a second there Kevin De Bruyne this time drawing the uh, a good save out the goalkeeper there may actually have taken a deflection 
off Nathan Dye, gone out for a corner. Hazard whips the ball in, and look at the way David Luiz rises to win that header. If you, uh, you go back and have a look at that, none of the replays really showed it too well. He jumps and then arches his back and gets his neck right around the ball to be able to swing his head, power that ball into the back of the net. They gave us a 2-0 lead, and uh, I was quite comfortable from that point on in this first half, at least. David Luiz is going to come close to picking up a second there. This time, Michel Vorme is on hand to make a decent save and push it around the post for a corner. I know we aren't able to extend our lead, but they brought on uh, Jonathan de Guzman for uh, for Mitsu at half time, and he really invigorated them. I don't know what Michael Laudrup said to him at half time. He must have offended their mothers or something because they were a completely different side after half time. They flew at me. Now we were quite strong defensively, but uh, they were going to pull one back here with 10 minutes to go through Pablo Hernandez. How, however, he's able to beat Rafael Varane and Aspilicueta in the air to win that header, I'm not entirely too sure, and I was very, very disappointed. But that set up a rather nervy final 10 minutes with us just trying to hold on for the win, but we were able to do so. As you can see, Swansea having a lot of the ball, as you might expect from uh, from Michael Laudrup slash Swansea side. But uh, we had more of the chances, and uh, we had more of the goals, crucially. So uh, we were able to pick up three points from that, which means we are keeping up the pressure on those at the top of the table. And uh, fortunately... Uh, we aren't losing too much ground, but we're going to have a, uh, a look at the squad report just coming up to uh, towards Christmas, or just after Christmas, of course, that game was on Boxing Day, but that means that the January transfer window is just around the corner. So we want to see who's progressing well, who isn't progressing well, and what sort of players are going to be needed to be replaced, either in this January or looking forward into next summer. So if there's anyone in particular that you want to have a quick look at their stats, then feel free to pause the video at any point. Uh, a couple of players are making really nice improvements. Players like Juan Mata, though, it would be nice if... Uh, he was able to uh, to make a bit of an improvement because he's been seeing quite a bit of football but uh, not really making any sort of progress as a player. A few players over the age of 30 like Samuel, Atu, Samuel Eto, uh, John Terry, Frank Lampard etc, Ashley Cole are starting to decrease so it's really going to be an issue in the summer. We're going to have to have maybe quite a big turnaround with uh, those older players just having to go out not for the sake of um, you know not wanting to play them but they're just not going to be good enough which is really unfortunate because in real life they are good enough but such is FIFA with players over 30 and uh, that is the nature of the beast etc so uh, we might have to replace quite a few players in the summer but if we we've got I think we've got about 16 million pounds to spend in uh, this January transfer window should we need to spend it so uh, like I say or have been saying for a few episodes now we're going to look for a, uh, a holding midfield role if I possibly can find someone in that of that ilk and maybe even a winger I have been looking at wingers actually over the uh, the past few in-game weeks etc sending scouts out to have a look at different countries but no one's really stood out yet so if there's anyone in the uh, anyone that you think you should uh, I should have a look at uh, scout wise then uh, feel free to leave a comment down below in the comment section let me know who to have a look at of course we are going to have a few players coming back from loan of course at the end of this season players like Victor Moses Thibaut Courtois and Romelu Lukaku who you might expect will be pushing for a first team place so we may not have to spend as much in the summer as uh, previously thought actually but we'll have to wait and see how that pans out but January transfer window is just around the corner we're going to drop to two games an episode during the transfer window as we always do but that's going to bring this one to a close guys so thank you very much for watching I will put the end slate on screen just after the squad report so there will be a little snippet of gameplay on there from uh, the previous episode which was last Friday so uh, if you missed that episode then feel free to click on the link on screen over the snippet of gameplay and that will take you to that video if you aren't subscribed then feel free to do so there's an annotation on screen over that subscribe button and a link in the description as well and of course feel free to leave the video a like if you did enjoy but that is going to wrap this one up so thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you next time